Is that the meeting? Is it quick? Hello. Just going to meeting. Is it quick? Thank you. What did I write? Thank you. I've got the paper to yeah, oh, yeah, you didn't get, get the bank statement. And the, yeah. uh, the bank statement this morning tells you the correct part of the Hamarak. So it's not right. There's two lines. So we go to another spider. Yeah. No, no, I well, you missed it in Hebrew. What? You yeah. gave it in Hebrew over to Lewis. Oh. You're right. <laughs> I was here, you were there. Yes, I, I was there, but I couldn't listen. I couldn't understand. That's why I'm here. You've got money on the And now I'm to Thank you very, very much. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Fine. English. שלום לכולם. שלום לכולם. תודה רבה. I'm not sure every time if you prefer it, I speak in Hebrew and English. 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 And you know you for the English. <laughs> so, Bezrat Hashem, Shehu Leilui Nishmat, Chaya Rivka Bat Yosef Wolf, Sheza Yor Tzayt Shana Yom. Our subject is very interesting. And, uh, it's interesting because you can see the meeting between halacha and science. And I try not to focus just on things that are today, but to think on the future, on science of the future, on te of technology of the future. I want halacha not just to respond when something happens. I want halacha to lead. We have to see what's going, what will be in a few years, 10 years, 20 years, to be there beforehand. And uh, this is one of the reasons that I uh, created a few years ago, a special base midrash of Torah in Mada, called Mada Torah Techa. That it's uh, also Machon Lev, that I'm there, the Rosh Hashiva, and also Sulamot, that this is my education organization. And we deal a lot with AI, with a lot of other things, and today is cultivated meat. So first of all, we have to understand what is cultivated meat and what exactly we are dealing. So go in those pages. You have also this booklet. Go to the second page. This page, this page. Yeah, this. Okay. And 
you can see that the world all the time needs more meat and eat more meat. And actually we won't have enough meat in a few years for all the world. So one of the problems that we have that we won't have enough meat the other problem that we have is the pollution. 15% of pollution in the world comes from growing uh, cows and all uh, uh, other animals. This is the second problem. Third thing is uh, that we are trying to find better solutions that we won't need to kill animals. Uh, and I want to explain, and I'll say it. I'll say it also in the end. We believe that on one hand, it's okay. You may slaughter animals and eat them. If the Torah said it's okay, it's okay. I'm eating meat. I wanted to say that I ate. I didn't eat really yesterday meat <laughs> because I forgot eating. But I think the day before I went to a wedding, yes. So I ate meat even this week. I'm eating meat, uh, I think it's okay. But if we have a solution that will allow us to have meat with no need to slaughter animals, of course it would be better. And uh, we are speaking of something new and very unique. The Gemara in the first source, Kulin Kuftet, Gemara speaks on Yalta, that was the wife of Rav Nachman. And Yalta says to her husband, Rav Nachman, Kol davar Hashem, itir mashu dome. everything that Hashem told us not to do, he also allowed us to do something similar. And she says, and in Mashal, he told us not to eat pig, chazer, but he allowed us to eat fish that his name is shibuta, that have a taste of meat. And she brings examples like this. And all the history, uh, people tried to create things that are similar to meat, to other things. And we know we have uh, in Israel, Tivol, I suppose that you have another word in Chutz Laaretz for all the soya schnitzel and the soya tiras, you know, all those that are not real, but they have the taste of meat. What we are dealing with is not any, has no connection with all those. We are dealing with meat that will be meat one by one. No different, the same DNA, the same genome, everything exactly the same. But instead of slaughtering an animal, it was created in a lab. This thing started around 15 years ago, uh, but then it was something very, uh, you know, uh, special, unique uh, for a piece of meat. It cost the first piece $3 million. <laughs> a few years afterwards, it went off to $300,000. I assume that most people here wouldn't eat meat for $300,000. Uh, but lately, in the last few years, the ability to create this meat and to do it cheap, in the regular price and even cheaper is something uh, new. And we have today in this system cultivated meat and cultivated chicken and cultivated milk and cultivated eggs and cultivated honey and cultivated fish. And most of the leader firms, firms in the world are of course in Israel. Israel is number one, leads in all this. We have 10 companies in Israel, 
and lots of things that Israel invent in this area go over afterwards to all the world. Uh, I'm in touch with lots of the com those companies. They come to advise, and afterwards I'll explain. And it's very important because like this, we can also try to lead them to do it in the right way, in the right system. Not always we succeed, but we can try. What is exactly this cultivated needs? So you can go to the next page. We need first, these pages, we need first to have a stem cell. You know, we have cells that are in charge on blood, on muscles, bones, lots of things. But for usually, I mean, we could take cells of muscles and create from them uh, meat, but it's better for us to get stem cells that they are clean, the beginning. And from them, we can create everything. The, before the way divided and divided and divided, so then we can direct them to the right place. So first of all, we need to get the stem cells. There are a few systems how to get the stem cells, but one of the popular ones is what I wrote here by biopsy. We take the cow, and in the beginning of the pregnancy, after a few days, you take biopsy, a drop of this, those uh, stem cells of uh, embryonic stem cells. Then uh, you put them in a pot and uh, you feed them. And then uh, in special way, uh, special machines, we multiply them and direct them to the right way. And in a few weeks, we have meat. Today, most of the meat that we are speaking would be ground meat. We have the ability to create also steak, but it's much more expensive because then you need bones, you need this. We, we know how to do it, but uh, today the companies are focusing more on ground meat. And uh, till uh, a year ago, half a year ago, we didn't know, will it be uh, real? Will it be uh, something uh, practical? And a few months ago, the FDA in the States gave uh, issue, confirm of the first uh, farm of uh, cultivated meat. And we know today that in a few years, uh, around 30% of the meat will be cultivated. And in 20 years, we assume that 50% or 70% will be cultivated. And we have now to deal with all the halacha questions for in this meat. So let's go to the next page. First question is about the food in the fat. When you put the stem cells, when you feed them. And I have to say, there are a few articles that were written about those stem cells and cultivated meat. Most of them, at least half of the article is not relevant at all because they are old. They were written three years ago just to understand what's going on in our crazy world, because things are changing all the time, all the time. One of the big changes is that the part of food, till recently it was serum that's made of blood. And lots of questions are, is it okay? You take the blood, in the end, uh, okay, you don't eat the blood, but the stem cells are growing by this uh, blood. But uh, lately, an Israeli company succeeded to do the same thing natural. 
‫עם צמחים, ‫פלאוורס, ‫ואת רוב העולם ‫הצטרפו לזה סיסטם. ‫אז אנחנו לא צריכים לדבר ‫עם הסירום. ‫אנחנו לא צריכים לדבר. ‫אז את זה אני אעשה פה בגרי, ‫כי זו לא הייתה שאלה שלנו היום. We have three main questions that we need to deal with. First question, Can you have, can you eat cheeseburger? Cultivated meat. Can you eat it with cheese? Is it meat or puff? This is the first question. Second question, as I said before, lots of the companies are taking the stem cells by biopsy. And we have a rule that's called ever minachai. You mustn't eat an organ from a live animal. Can you take the biopsy from a live animal? Or is, or does it is considered like ever minachai? This is the second question. First question, can you eat non-kosher animal? Can you eat, uh, once we didn't say uh, even the name, we'd say Davar Acher. <laughs> Can you eat Chazer? Uh, Can you eat pig cultivated? Is it okay? Those are the questions that we are going to deal with with Hashem. Now, we go to the source pages. Because you want Hebrew, right? Hebrew. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so we are now in the second source. Amud Bavli Yevamot, Samechtet Amud Bet. Ve'atanya, Bat Kohen, Shenisset L'Yisrael, Umeet, Tovelet Ve'ochelet, Bitruma La'erev. We have a rule that a daughter of a Kohen may eat Ruma, may eat the holy food of Truma, if she's not married. If she got married, let's say now this is our blackboard. If she's not married here, then she can eat Truma. If she's married, she cannot eat Truma. If she was married and the husband passed away, if she has children, she cannot eat Truma. If she has no children, she can eat Truma again. Veshava el beit avia kinurea comes back to the father's home. What happens if she's pregnant? Does she, does she consider here that she made Truma or here? Okay, the Gemara says. Amar of Chizda. Tovelet veochelet ad arbaim. דאילו מאברה, אלו מאברה. ואם מאברה עד ארבעים, מאיה בעלמא היא. רב חיסדא says, she may eat till the fortieth days of the pregnancy. In the beginning, first forty days, she's here, as if she has no children. After forty days, she's here, as if she has children. Why? Because the first 40 days of the pregnancy, it's Maya be Alma. It's like water, like mine. And following this, we can say, because the biopsy is after five days, so we can say that it's like water. And if it's like water, so then it won't be a problem. Like water, it won't be a problem, and then it's okay that it came out by biopsy. This is first source, second one. We know that usually you can go to the last source in the first column. Usually anything that comes out of an animal that is tamed, that is not pure, 
is not pure also. So if I yotze mina tameta meitzim, that everything that will be out of chazir, uh, of something else, maybe not kosher. But we take one stem cell, and in the end we have millions. So maybe we have here bitul b'shishi. We know that if you have something and it's mixed with lots of other things, maybe it's bitul b'shishim. So maybe in our case we have bitul b'shishim. Uh, you know, bitul b'shishim is something that we use uh, lots of uh, times in halacha. There is a story in Jerusalem, 100 years ago, Jerusalem was very poor, there's nothing to eat. And there was uh, somewhere of the uh, house of tzedakah of poor people. And once they got the ability to have a piece of meat and they made a huge uh, meat soup, chicken soup, meat soup. And they were very excited for months, they didn't have it. And someone passed over who is a cup of milk and by mistake he dropped it in the saucepan they checked and they saw it's not batel b'shishim we needed it the, the the meat will be double 60 than the milk batel b'shishim it wasn't double 60 they wanted to chuck it out and then they said we won't chuck it out without asking the rabbi of jerusalem of shmuel salam but people said what's the point we checked what the rabbi can say. But they said, okay, we'll bring the rabbi. No, it's something so big. They brought the rabbi and said, I have to check. Came back after a few hours and said, you can eat the soup. He said, why? He said, I cannot tell you. <laughs> what did that? I told you, eat, eat it. He didn't agree to tell them the reason. And after years, they discovered that the rabbi went to the Milkman Khalban of Jerusalem and asked him, Tell me the truth. How much water you put in the milk before you sell it? And so he put so much water. He said, Okay, it's Matel Beshishi, no problem. <laughs> the milk is not a lot. And he allowed them to eat it. So here we have not be too Beshishi, it's even in millions, one stem cell and millions. So, okay, maybe it can be okay. I thought you can only have batel b'shishim if it's done by accident. If it's done on purpose, maybe it doesn't apply. So maybe, maybe yeah, it's a problem, as you say, because we have a rule: ein nevatlin isur lechatchila. You don't do lechatchila something like this just if it happened. And the uh, mediavad. And here we have to check: is it okay if it's a chatchila? But maybe. If uh, it was made by a company, maybe we'd say, okay, then you can eat it. If Goyim are doing it, it's Jewish. But it's, it's, a, it's a question. This is the one question that we have to deal with. Uh, and there is also a third reason to say that it's okay. First reason was that it's the first 40 days. Second reason, that there is Bitul B'shishim. Third reason. When we brief, you know, uh, millions of germs. How can we brief? And the Ruch HaShuruchan, you can see him in the next column, then the second one from the bottom. You see Ruch HaShuruchan? Hey, Dalet. Ruch HaShuruchan says, Ha'emetu delo asra Torah bame she'en ha'ayin sholet. Something that you cannot see in your eyes, the Torah allows us to eat. They don't eat not Torah lemalachim. Torah didn't, wasn't get uh, given to angels, angels. Shein lo ken. Harei kama meachokrim katvu, shegam kol ha'aviru malay bu'im dakim in adakim. Uch shadam poteh achvi bolea kama emem. All the air is full with germs. And you, you, you swallow them. Don't worry. Aruch HaShulchan thinks it's okay to breathe. It's okay, you may breathe, 
because you cannot see them in your eyes. Those stem cells, no one can see in his eyes. They are all microscopic. You cannot see them in your eyes. So if you cannot see them in your eyes, maybe it doesn't consider at all as food. And it would be okay. I have just to say, when we speak on all the bugs of lettuce and cabbage and broccoli, all of them you can see in your eyes. No problem to see them. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. To recognize them. To, 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 let's say the, 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 the bugs of lettuce. They're usually green on green. Hashem help them to have a sva'a, you know, like in the army that you are. If you take them and you put them on a white paper, you see straight away something works. So if there's something that you cannot see in your eyes, it's no problem. But things that we can see, but it's complicated to recognize. Okay, this is a problem. So it's fine, but you have to see what to do with them. But in our case, you cannot see them at all. You cannot see them in your eyes. You cannot see them at all. And maybe because of this, it should be okay. So we have three reasons to say that the stem cells, that the cultivated meat is okay. First reason, that is in the first 40 days in slight water. Second reason, that's there is Vitul Veshishim. It's double millions than this stem cell. Third reason, that you cannot see it in your eyes. And because you, can, you cannot see it in your eyes, so maybe it doesn't consider it all as food. <laughs> With regard to the bato vashishim, but it's not everything is bato vashishim, right? Like chametz, no. Even if it's, it's so you right. say maybe, so maybe this would be in a category like that. So you say maybe it's like the vachashuv, something important that is not batel vashishim. I want to tell you, I gave a few months ago shurim in a few places in the states, and also in a few universities. And they asked me to give a show in Princeton University. Yeah. And about it. Yeah. Uh, when I came there, they argued if Princeton or Harvard, what is better? <laughs> <laughs> they said a few things we are better. Well, Princeton. Princeton? Okay. So it's interesting because you know Israel they don't know anything, they know Harvard. They don't know everything. <laughs> uh, and then they told me, look. They are very smart students. They asked me to speak on cultivated meat. They are very smart students, so I'll do with them something. Uh, said, okay. Half of the shiur was like a duty now. I did it with more sources, but uh, and after they were convinced that it's okay, and I said, okay. Now let's judge everything from the beginning, and I want to ask you to break everything that I said. Let's try to see if what I said, we can disagree. What do you say now? So you said maybe the Vachashuv, you said. Let's start with the first 40 days that it's like mm -hmm. water. Can we say, no, it's not connected. What you brought us here, we don't agree with this uh, proof. The Gemara speaks about pregnancy. The Gemara says that till 40 days, it's like water, but we can understand the Gemara in two systems. First system will be in the first 40 days, it's water. Okay, if it's water, it's okay. But the other system is to understand it's not water. The Gemara wants to say it's not pregnancy. It's like water. Water is just a symbol here. But also, if it's not pregnancy, it's still a part of the animal. The 40 days is important for us to understand if it's pregnancy or not pregnancy. But it doesn't say that it's not a part of the animal. I, I'll explain. You know, the first 40 days is important for us also today. For special cases of abortion. We won't allow to do abortion first 40 days for nothing. But this is, if there is a big reason, 
So first 40 days, it's easier because maybe it's not a uh, real pregnancy. And I'll just uh, tell you a story just to understand the job of rabbis. I got a telephone call from someone from Petah Tikva. I don't know at all. And she said, Rabbi, I'm in my first 40 days pregnant and I want, uh, if you can give me a uh, issue, if you can uh, confirm, allow me to have an abortion. And uh, I said, uh, why? Said uh, it was a pregnancy by mistake. I said, from who? He said, from my husband. I said, uh, how much time are you married? She said, half a year. And then she said, Rebbe, but I have to tell you, I asked already another two rabbis. They said no. <laughs> <laughs> but I called you, maybe you'll say yes. What's the answer? <laughs> no. But you know, although I'm very busy, very busy, but when I hear something like this, I fear something, uh, yeah, something's wrong. I told her, come with your husband. She thought she's coming because maybe she'll get in hate her. I didn't think at all to give an aid, yes. She came from Petah Tikva, they said, and after half an hour, she says, I'm not sure in our marriage. Okay, uh -huh. I waited for it. I waited. And then I told her why. She says, look, my husband is in fifth year in Hezder Yeshiva, he doesn't know what we'll do in his life. And, and she's already in high tech. She's uh, successful. And, okay, I asked the husband, uh, what did you say on your wife? And he said, just good things. Just good things. Good things. Then I asked her, do you have good things to say, to say on your husband? She says, he's very clever. He's very kind. He'll try to do everything to make me happy. <laughs> he listens to me all the time. Uh, and she says, he does everything for me. And he's, uh, okay, I told him, go out. He went out. I told, him, I told her, every way, every day, you should wake up and say, Halil. <laughs> you, know, you got a husband. You say, yeah. so kind. Nechmat, listens to you, makes me happy. If she, the, she said the worst thing, if, if I'm sad, he do everything that I won't be sad. Uh, okay, and he's clever. he find a job, it will be okay. You I mean, don't understand, you got the treasure. After two weeks, she called me and she said, you saved our marriage. I feel entirely different. And after eight day and a month, she called me. She had a baby. She said, I, I can't understand how I wanted to, to make an abortion. I'm so happy today. So I'm saying it, first of all, you know, rabbis, we need to hear not the question, but what behind of the questions. And secondly, when we use these 40 days, we use it for those cases, to allow abortion, not to allow abortion, because maybe the first 40 years, 40 days, it's not a, a pregnancy, but also if it's not pregnancy, it's still a part of the animal. So the Gemara says it's like water, but the Gemara thinks it's water, maybe, but maybe the Gemara doesn't think it's water. She just tells us it's not a part of the pregnancy, but it's still a part of the, the, the cow, of the chazir, and then if it's a part of the chazir, so like the chazir is chazir, so this is chazir also in the first 40 days. So it's not the first the source that I said we can argue. We spoke about bitul beshishim. So you said here a few things, if you can do bitu lechatkhila, and maybe it's something, davar chashuv, something important, and it's not batel, not canceled, but also there is another different. Going back to what you just said, you're either getting it from a biopsy, or you're getting it from a placenta, and both of them require you to get part of the body, and therefore the body of the animal is the body is over 40 days old, the animal that you're getting the biopsy from. So it's, it's not it's not like a, a newborn, like a, a fetus, which is a mixed bria, but this is part of the old bria. Yes. It's taking out its cell. Yes, although it's new in this bria, it's it's less than 40 days in this in, in a body. But the, the body is more than 40 days. 
Right, and blood replaces itself every 120 days. So. Yeah. Uh, so yes, it's also the both both ways here. Bitul beshishim. Usually, we take something that it's not kosher, and we mix it with double sixty kosher. Then you say it's batel beshishim. In our case, he didn't take the stem cell and mix it in other things. The same stem cell multiply and multiply and multiply. And then there was a huge quantity, but okay, is it Batel Beshishim? It seems something else. And actually, also, we have to think if it's Batel, every time it's multiplied to two, to two, to two, so maybe it's not a uh, rov. Uh, we said that it's something that you cannot see in your eyes. It's true that you cannot see in your eyes. And it's true that if you want to eat a stem cell like this, eat it. But you don't eat it like this. You take it and you multiply and multiply and in the end, you see it in your eyes. So how do we deal with it? It's not so simple to say it's something that you cannot see in your eyes. And there are a few sources here that I'm skipping now, but they're speaking on this, on what I spoke now in this page. And I want to go now to the next page. Let's say, let's say that all what we said till now, let's say that it's smoother. Okay? Let's say. Let's say that uh, the stem cell, the first 40 days is like water, and it's battle beshishim, and you cannot see it in your eyes. Let's say that it's okay. Let's say. But we have another question. The question, the other question is, what is more important, the process or the result? Because also if we say that the process is okay, in the end, the result is one by one, like a pig, same DNA, the same genome. Can you eat something that is one by one, like a pig? Also, if the process was okay, also if we say, okay, but El Bishishim, you cannot see it, but do you follow the process or do you follow the result? And if the result is exactly like pig, so maybe you cannot eat it. You know, the other things that we read in the Gemara and we say, wow, it's so far away, this imagination. Why Chazal said it? And it's unbelievable to see the things that Chazal said 2,000 years ago, um, or more or less things that are relevant today for new things that seem so far away. And one of them is our sugya in Sanhedrin Nuntet Amud Bet. Rabbi Shimon Ber Chalachta, Hava Ka'azi Ve'urcha. Rabbi Shimon Ber Chalachta was walking around in the street, away. Pag ubo hanach ar yevata de kahava de havu kanami le api. Two arayot, two lines, wanted to kill him. Amar hakfirim shoagim la terra. He said the pasuk in Teilim, kfirim, kfirim is lions, shoagim for teref, to eat me. No, it's interesting that the tzadik. Also, when he's, in, when he's in, in danger, he has a pasuk to say. <laughs> yeah, in danger, say, well, it comes like this uh, out of it. Okay. The Gemara says, Nachitu tartei atmata, two big pieces of meat, shtei rechaim. Two big pieces of meat came from heaven to rescue him. Chada achalua, vechada shavkua, they ate one of the pieces, the lions, and they left him, they went. The other piece, they left. Now it's very interesting because this is a piece of meat that wasn't from a slaughter animal, but was created in a lab for heaven. It came here and it's very interesting for us. Is it kosher or not kosher? Very interesting. And we would like him very much to ask somewhere if it's kosher or not kosher. And Baruch Hashem, he did it, he asked. The Mara says, 
הייתי ואת על בית מדרש, הייתי טוב תספיס אוף מיט, ובייס מדרש, to ask. ביי אלה. דבר טמא או זה או דבר טהור, כושר או נוט כושר. אמרו לי, אין דבר טמא יורד מן השמיים. They told him it's kosher, came from heaven, it's kosher. No, no, it's very interesting. So we would like him to ask another question. Let's say that this piece of meat looks like a pig. Also then we would say it's kosher. And Baruch Hashem, he asked this question. Bai minei, Rabbi Zeyra, mi Rabbi Abau. Yachda lo dmul chamor mao. And they told him, Amar le Yaru, not a stupid question. What do you ask questions like this? He didn't know that he asked it for us. For hundreds of years later on, Amar le en davar tame yored min ha-shamayim. It doesn't matter if it looks like a donkey, like a chazer. We don't follow the result. En davar tame yored min ha-shamayim. It seems, it seems that If it didn't come from an animal, but from heaven or from a lab, so then it's okay. Also, the result is like a pig. So it seems that we can eat it, although the result is like a pig, because it didn't come from the animal. But maybe also this, we can say different. What we can say? We can say maybe the point is not that it didn't come from an animal, but that it came from heaven. And this is what created the Lelech. So we cannot be sure also from this source. I hope you see, you feel what I try to do, to do here today. What I try to do is to, con- to confuse you. <laughs> this was the goal of the ship. Why I wanted to confuse you? Uh, more than 30 years ago, I wrote an article on Filat Aderich today, in our time. And I tried to prove there that if you go from Alon Shvu to Jerusalem, places that you are afraid when in the way to not Rachim, car accidents, other things, if, you are, if it's out of the town, can say Tfilat Aderich. I wrote it to Mori and Rabbi Arav Lichtenstein, Zecher Tzadik Livracha. To go over. He went over and he wrote a few things and then he called me. And he says, Ata batuach me ma shata omer? Yashu? I told him, I think so. He said, okay, if you think so, so why do you say, you can say Tfilat Aderich? Tichtov. Nire'e. I think so. Tichtov. From then, always when I wrote, I wrote, Nir'e, Kanir'e, Mistaber. You know, years ago, I had every, there was here something called Shabbat the Shabbatot. They gave in shul every week. And I wrote an article every week. Someone that I don't know sent me a copy of 10 articles. And he all the time marks, Nir'e, 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 the site. Yes or no? What is that Nir'e? Okay, this I got from Uribe. And I think that in our case, you know, there are rabbis that are sure, certain, that it's okay, it's powerful. There are rabbis that are certain in the other way. I have to say, when you look on all the sources, I think you have to be modest enough to say, really cannot prove. And because of this, we need to deal in the system of suffix. Suffolk, when you have adult, we have rules. What do you do when we have something that you are not sure? You doubt something. And I start, when we doubt something, you know, Suffolk de Oraita de Khumra, Suffolk de Rabanan le Kula, Suffolk de Oraita, we have to be machmed, Suffolk de Rabanan, we can be making. To eat non kosher animal, we are not going to eat. We are not. Not going to eat cultivated pig or cultivated shamps or shamps or other things. We're not going to eat them. First of all, it's affect the oraita because if you are wrong, it's isur the oraita. Secondly, it seems that 
the identity stays. And if it came from a Chazir, that uh, it will be uh, considered like a Chazir. And third thing, Yehudi, lo yochal Chazir. A Jewish person would not eat Chazir. I have to tell you, I told it to a journalist, and he said, you know, you rabbis, you have a problem. <laughs> Everything, psychologists, kol babasva, psychology, <laughs> you know, start uh, try to release, to ishtachher, <laughs> to, to think uh, out of the box. No problem, it's stem cell. If it's stem cell, so what? So it has, what's the problem? Then I told him, you know, I agree with you. I'm ready, you can still. Stem cell, uh, Hazer cultivated from stem cell. I said, yes, I said, yes, but on one condition. I want next to it in the supermarket that will have also meat of human being. I said, what do you mean, meat of human being? I told him from stem cell, exactly the same. We take, I want to sell from your stem cells to do schnitzels. We take stem cells from you, we make schnitzels. Cultivate schnitzel. Cultivated pig and cultivated schnitzel from you. He was shocked. He started shaking. He said, let me think about it. And uh, today we are very good friends. And I think that like human being, Bezrat Hashem, I hope, that won't eat cultivated human being meat, a Jewish won't eat cultivated pig. Uh, I think also Alacha, but, but also it's, it's Doshaya. This is something Doshaya. I don't understand something in what you just said. Cultivated from a stem cell from a pig, even if at the end result is ground meat. Is that what you're saying? Or are you saying no. cultivated from a pig and it looks like hard? Doesn't sure. matter. It's 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 no, but it's, 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 it's is the origin of the big issue? No, that's the stem it cell comes from a pig. From a pig. Okay. The result is like a pig. If it's ground or not ground, it doesn't matter. But the, it comes from a pig, the result of a pig. It comes from a human being, and the result is meat like human being. <laughs> it's exactly the same. What about from a trafe animal? No, that is a trafe animal. No, no, no. Let's say a behemoth that we can trade. Okay, so in a minute, I'll speak on Basar de Chalab, and it would be like much similar in a minute. Yeah. What about if, if the animal is kosher? And is it chalavi or is it kasari? Okay, in a minute to speak about it. I'm not familiar with the process. In the stem, when you're taking the stem cell, it's always just one stem cell. They're not mixing stem cells between kasher. No, it's one, stem one, stem cell. Cell. one stem cell. One stem cell. In any case, it's one stem cell. They do it like this because it multiply and multiply. It's one stem cell. You're only talking about early stages of these techniques. It has to be possible in a little while for them to take one stem cell and produce a whole living animal from it, which looks like a pig. If it would be, no, we can do also today a living animal. Yeah. We can do. We are not doing because uh, the world understands uh, it's not right to create uh, creatures with the, the world. A few times in history that they did it. Sheep, right? Yeah, they, uh, yeah. they did it, but uh, then it will be something alive. Here was created in a lab. It wasn't alive. It was, and then it has neshama. Right. Ours is no neshama. We didn't create a, a, a cow. We created a piece of meat. We can create a cow, but they, they, they don't want it. They don't need it. It's not something that we can do it, but it's not something that no one wants to do it now. They want meat. They don't need a cow, they need the meat. If you have a cow, you need to grow it, you need to feed it, you have meat, you know, meat. Okay, okay, now, now, I want to add a few points. Uh, First one, to create by biopsy from a kosher animal, uh, I think that it's a way that maybe can be kosher. There are reasons to say it's kosher. I won't think it would be mehadrin this way, but it would be okay. Maybe it will be not less than regular meat today that is not mehadrin. Also, that we have uh, things that are 
not so simple if it's not mehadi, not, not glad. No, actually, they easily they can create mehadrin meat. What can they do? They can slaughter an animal and then take the, the cells. What's the problem? Problem is that like we have a religion of Yadut, there are other religions, one of them is vegan. Mm -hmm. And vegan, vegan, mm -hmm. vegan. And if you take from an animal that was slaughtered, they won't eat it. And everything is money, you know, okay. So we tell the companies, look, you take one animal, one, and you can give enough meat for all Israel for 20 years, one animal. So what's the problem? But they know that if it be slaughtered an animal, then those won't eat it. Those, they try to, now really, uh, there are places, there is a company in Israel that works with a slaughtered animal, they do it. They didn't ask me on time because what I want to do with this company, I'm trying, I want to take one animal and to bring all the cashews to bring Badat Saeed Haredi and Rav Lando and OU and Rabbanut and the Sephardis and Rav Mahpur and Chabad, <laughs> everyone that would agree on one animal. I think it's possible. One animal that everyone agrees it's Mehadrin. And if you have one animal, then you can have, can have from this meat for years and years for everyone that would be the best, the glad with price of the regular meat. That would be, that would be meat. Now, this is the next question that didn't deal yet, but it's, we, we, we can do it. We can do. Now, placenta, it's also something that maybe it's better, maybe that it's between. But all the time we have to think, so, or think also, also on other solutions, such as we spoke to a company uh, a year ago, in a half ago, cultivated chicken company. Why to make cultivated chicken if you can make cultivated meat? It's more expensive. But you know, a, a company, especially Israelis, everything is business. <laughs> they know exactly why, why it's better for them to make cultivated chicken. <laughs> Because most more people are eating chicken, chicken than meat. Right. So maybe it's less expensive, but it's more people will eat it. And they create this cultivated chicken, the stem cells from an egg. I said, wow, wonderful. I sent my team. And then they saw that they do it from an egg, but from the blood of the egg. So destroyed everything. I didn't know what to do. So we checked. I said, oh, maybe from the blood. It's the white. We told them, work harder. Try to do it. Not from the blood. And a few months ago, they succeeded to create a cultivated chicken from an egg after two days that everything is yellow. No blood. Mm. And because I think that this is a question that we need Gdoleado with us, I brought to this place Rav Asher Weiss, that is very famous from the Haredi mm -hmm. world, and I brought also Rav Shechter from the YU and OU. And both of, us, both of them came, we were together, and we saw in our eyes, it's yellow, it's Mehadrin. We have a picture, it's very strange, you see three rabbis that are watching an egg like this. <laughs> you see three rabbis watching the yellow egg, but this is with Mehadrin. Uh, following the question of meat and milk, so also this, to eat together, this is a safek, the writer, we want eat cheeseburger. But maybe, not in the beginning, will take time, but maybe in 10 years, 20 years, we could eat a meat meal and in the end, in the end to have a real ice cream. Because one after the other is the Rabbanan. And especially if we'll have a chicken that was created from an egg. So it's much easier because if it was created from an egg, so is it power for meat? If you look, following the process, we'll say it's, it's, it's power because an egg is power. So, so the meat is power. Mm -hmm. If you follow the result, so the result is chicken. So you say it's like meat. So, but I think that, that there's a big, uh, uh, we can say that it's power. I have to say the companies, they want us to pass in that it's part of it. I thought also, till I heard them. The companies, would they like us to pass in that it's part of it? So I thought that they would like us to pass in part. It makes them crazy to hear it. It's not part, it's meat. We are not creating here 
טבעון. We are creating meat. Which you can eat with חלב. It doesn't matter, but they want us to say meat now. And say, and say, just, it's interesting, you know. It's interesting because they want to feel, and they say, and it's so important for them to understand, they said, if the rabbis will say it's meat, people will treat it like meat. It's, it's, it's important for them. And I have to say also, lots of, uh, I don't know, call them rabbis, of the Muslim world, they're also waiting for us. Right, yeah. So our psak, mm-hmm. if it's halal, not halal, everything are waiting. Yes, what will we say if they, they can eat it or they cannot eat it? They'll watch it. They're going to watch they're, 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 that product will be sold, not next to Tivon, but in the meat section. The right, meat section right, stored. right. Yeah. But if you're starting from the egg, which is part of it, yeah. as, your, as your source, not really doing the chicken, starting from the egg, the egg is considered part of it. So therefore, the source, the source is part of it. And therefore, you're just creating more cells from the source. So this is what they said before. It depends if you look yeah, on the process, on the result. Mm-hmm. If you look on the process, you are 100% right. But there are rabbis, like Ravashi Weiss, that he thinks you, you follow the result. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a chidush, but this is what he thinks. And if the result is one by one like chicken, he thinks it would be meat. I wrote him uh, all what we say here and said, no, oh, I think it's still meat. Now it's, it comes more complicated because like you said, today we can take milk. We we'll can take, take a stem cell from the milk. We can make it reprogramming and create from it meat. So what the of meat that was created for milk? <laughs> can you eat it with milk? It was created for milk. You know what I'm saying? It comes all the time more interesting and complicated than something new just now, just now that they are doing something that is not exactly cultivated, but they are doing now like cultivated milk from yeast, from shmarim. Mm. Yeast. Yep. Tara bought it. Now, it's not, it's not the same uh, DNA and genome because it was created from yeast, but it has exactly all the parts of, meat, of milk. Someone that is sensitive to milk will be sensitive to this also. The same taste, everything the same, but this would be real power because this is even the result, it's not the same DNA. And Tao bought it, and, uh, and I think, as I understand, that they are going to get now an action that this will be power. So things are going to change. I'm all the time in touch. Uh, Rabbi Genek from the OU, I think we spoke maybe 30 times in the last few months. And I'm trying to do things that will do things together as much as possible. I think it's very important, something like this. Uh, but this is a very interesting subject. And I just want to say for the end. Now, I was all discussion. You know, we say, at least in American English, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, yeah. it is a duck. Now, I don't know if the British use that phrase, yeah. but, you know, so you're saying, if it looks like me, if it smells like me, it's me, regardless of working. I mean, okay, very good. That the where it comes from, it retains the characteristic where it comes from. Therefore, what you're saying is that it becomes from me, me. If it comes from straight, it's straight. Right. Usually it's true. Usually it's true. At least as a suffix. This would be the bottom line. Oh, along those lines, then is there any philosophy requirement that the original source cells needs to come from an animal or chicken that would that had actually eat the dung? Yes, yes. So how can it, the source come from with an egg? And because an egg is not an animal. If it's an animal, it's shita. But if it's an egg, it's didn't come at all from animal. And uh, actually, what you say now was very nice discussion there in the lab with between Rav Asher Weiss and Rav Shechter. Because Rav Shechter said like this, not meat at all, no problem, because it's from egg. But he told Rav Asher Weiss, if you think that you follow the result and it's meat, so I, how can it be kosher with no shechita? This is what you say here. 
But really, I don't think it's a problem because I think that shechita is not just something that had soul. And something that had no soul, I don't think needs a shechita at all. And I just saying the bottom line, you know, there are people that all technology, things made them, make them terrified, the new things. I believe that the world of Hashem getting, gets better and not worse. But always, the new tools, they can build the world and they can destroy the world. We need the halacha to direct them, the Torah in the right way that will help us to build the world. And uh, if I, I look at cultivated meat, Rav Kook wrote, it's in the last source, it doesn't matter now, he wrote that once, once, everyone is going to be vegetarian because we won't eat, kill animals anymore. And I think that Rav Kook had nevua, but he didn't know what is the nevua. He knew, but he thought that we'll won't eat meat. And he didn't know that we are going to eat meat and we won't need to slaughter animals. And I feel that uh, although, as I said in the beginning, it's okay to eat meat today and I eat, but if the world will be able to eat meat and won't need to slaughter and to kill animals, I think it's a part of our redemption, of our geula. Everything in the end is a part of geulat Israel, and the geula of Am Israel is geula of the world. But everything, we are here in Medinat Israel after thousands of years that we could just dream and never in history a nation was chucked out and after thousands of years came back, we are in the middle, middle of a miracle. And I feel that also those things of cultivated meat is a part of our geula and miracle that Bezrat Hashem will bring us another step. Okay. <laughs> Oh, it turned out that. Excuse me. Get out. The boy gets smashed and destroyed. Oh, he reported. Well, the organization reports. It's online. If you want to argue with him, fine. The whole process, his process, this process. Yeah, Two thousand years ago, they were told you were going to happen.